Namaste and good evening. I, Namaste. Swati Solanki, researcher at IMPRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, Prabhav, Evam Niti Anusandhan Sansthan, Nai Delhi, extend my warmest welcome to you all to IMPRI hashtag web policy talk. Today, we have gathered for a special talk on the future of labor codes, impact and way forward from trade union perspectives as a part of the series the state of employment and livelihood, hashtag employment debate. The series is organized by Center for Work and Welfare at IMPRI with Indian Social Institute, New Delhi and Counterview. It is my privilege to introduce the chair for our session, Father Dr. Denzel Fernandez. So, is executive director at Indian Social Institute, New Delhi. The moderator of our today's session is Professor K.R. Shyam Sundar, Sir is a professor at XLRI Xavier School of Management, Jamshedpur. I would now like to introduce our esteemed panelists for today's talk. We have with us very eminent leaders from trade unions for this very important discussion. We have with us Amarjeet Kaur. Ma'am is General Secretary at All India Trade Union Congress, AITUC. We welcome you, ma'am. Amitava Guha, who is National Secretary at Center of Trade, Indian, Indian Trade uh, Unions, C2. We welcome you, sir. Chandra Prakash Singh. Sir is National Vice President at Indian National Trade Union Congress, INTUC. We welcome you, sir. Virjesh Upadhyay. Sir is associated with research and intellectual work at Bhartiya Mazdoor Sangh, BMS, and is Director General at Datupan Thingari Foundation. As discussants for this panel discussion, we have with us Prashant K. Nanda, who is national writer at Life Mint, and Rashmi Venkateshan, who is assistant professor of law at National Law School of India University, Bangalore. Now, I invite our moderator, Professor K. R. Shyam Sundar, to initiate the discussion and invite our chair for opening remarks and to take this panel discussion forward. We look forward to learning from our esteemed gathering on, it, on this very important topic amidst the ongoing monsoon session of the parliament session. So over to you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Impri. Uh, thanks, Dr. Rajun Kumar. And thanks, uh, Swati Solanki, for your introductory remarks. I mean, uh, introducing the panelists and discussants uh, and the chairperson for the program. Uh, I, without uh, much ado, I request uh, Father uh, Denzel Fernandez to give his opening remarks, and then I will carry forward the session. Over to you, Father. Thank you, Professor Shamsundar, and a uh, warm good evening to all the panelists and the discussants and all the viewers of this web policy talk. Um, this uh, web policy talk on the future of labor codes is a very, very important discussion because we all know that the labor codes were passed uh, in the last uh, year or so, and uh, the rules have also come out. But there has been a, sort of a polarized reaction to the labor codes. On the one hand, we have the industry uh, like the Confederation of Indian Industry, who says that this, these labor codes will build a future of work that is progressive, a safer, fairer, greener, and more resilient. That is what they say. Um, and the union government also says that it is necessary to bring these labor codes um, to bring the national economy back on track. But having said that, today we are focusing on the uh, trade union perspective and workers and the trade unions have 
expressed a lot of reservations on the labor codes. Um, the reactions have been, uh, you know, like the labor codes is a modern form of slavery, where the working class is forced by its miserable financial conditions to work on whatever exploitative terms an employer wants to employ its members for. Um, and the workers have several grievances, which include uh, the sweeping powers given to employers against the workforce. And there is a, a fear that the labor codes is putting the workers mercy of the employers uh, and the working conditions will also deteriorate as we have already seen how many states have um, uh, been increasing the number of working hours uh, a day. So um, uh, context, it is very important to focus on the trade union perspective because the trade unions represent the workers. <coughs> they represent not only the, the workers that are members of this union, but also the large unorganized sector, which is not covered also by um, labor unions. So, uh, so I, I, I'm happy that uh, this uh, discussion is taking place. And Ek meeting me home, eh? With this uh, uh, Professor Sham Sundar as the moderator, I'm sure we are going to have an interesting discussion. I wish uh, this discussion all the best, and we hope we uh, have a way forward on these labor codes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Father uh, Gonzalo Fernandez. You have set the context very nicely by uh, by by uh, clearly giving away the polarized uh, perspectives that exist on the labor law reforms. Now, this particular panel discussion, discussion is going to concentrate on the future of the labor codes that have already been passed by the parliament during 2019 and 2020. And, uh, I mean, the future is going to be discussed. And we all know that uh, based on the recommendations of the Second National Commission on Labor, the India government initiated codification of the so-called numerous labor laws. The count was always 44, but in B schools and uh, other uh, universities, we don't uh, uh, teach more than uh, 1920 labor laws uh, which belong to the organized sector. If we count all of them, even if we take the entire number of laws that the four labor courts have managed to codify, which is a good, good which is a big question mark to me, are 29. So let's, I mean, it's not numerous, but anyway, we all know the criticisms. We all know the neoliberal agenda has taken over and uh, the labor courts have been, excepting the wage code, the other three courts have been passed in unusual circumstances, that is the during the COVID times and when the parliament was almost empty, save the treasury benches, and it's questionable. Now, this webinar is not going to look back at what happened and how foul or fair it was, the passage of the labor law, labor courts, etc. But we have the labor courts now notified. They are guessed it. And the labor minister, the labor secretary had this assured the nation, the foreign investors, everyone that from April 1st, 2021, the labor courts will come into effect. But owing to the lack of preparedness on the part of the state governments, that the, 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 the date of implementation has been suggestively postponed to October 1st, 2021. Now, what I did, I did a quick check on the labor codes. The what I mean, how prepared are the state governments are? Well, have they framed the rules? The central government have framed the rules, but they are yet to uh, notify the final revised rules. They are waiting for the say, state governments to be prepared. 
I just looked at the state governments. I find that big states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Haryana have not, as on date today, have not notified the first draft of the rules under the all the four labor codes. That is Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Haryana. Of course, Delhi is a small state. And states like Karnataka, Gujarat and Jharkhand have framed rules only with respect to the wage code and the industrial relations code. The biggest deficit comes when we look at the rules framed under Occupational Safety and Health and Working Conditions Code and the Social Security Code, which are far more important and have a lot of impact on the welfare and social security and uh, occupational safety and health of the workers. This is a big blank. Now, there are a few, only uh, five states have framed uh, the draft rules uh, for all the four labor codes, which are Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and Punjab. Now, I not looked at the uh, northeastern states, including Assam. Uh, Assam, of course, I've done a, a few. So there is a huge, even, even as we speak on August uh, 3rd, there is a still a huge void. We are, we are still looking at the first draft of the rules framed by the state governments. So the question number one that I wish to pose to the moderators is that, is October 1 a likely date of implementation for the four labor courts at the national level? Given the lack of preparedness on the part of the various state governments that I have listed. Of course, the trade union, uh, the, I mean, we have a formidable, uh, uh, you know, group of uh, union leaders uh, representing the central trade unions, Comrade Amitav Guga from CATU, Mr. Bridges Upadeya from uh, BMS, Mr. Chandra Singh from INTUC, and Comrade Amarjit Kaur from AATUC. We all know the trade union perspective that, the, that there are a lot of faults in the courts. But I would, I mean, you, uh, one could have an opening remark of uh, highlighting the shortcomings according to them in the courts or in the rules. But I would request the uh, panel discussion to uh, go for, uh, take, take the discussion forward in terms of the future and the strategy of the trade unions. For example, has there been any social dialogue happening on the rules fringe or on the courts? or any possibility of amendments that is likely to happen. And more importantly, what is happening at the state level? There's a huge void on, on, we don't have information excepting those who are specialized in the field of law to go to the uh, specialized uh, portals to know what is happening at the state level. Uh, if, if some of them could throw light on uh, what is happening at the state level, it will be very important. But most importantly, what is going to be the strategy of the trade unions? There is some talk by some union leaders like Mr. Sanjay Singhvi and some advocates, uh, noted uh, advocates like Gaurin Gonzalez to say that they're going to challenge the constitution, constitutional validity of the labor courts or the, the, very, uh, ex, I mean, the very, very notion of the labor courts in the Supreme Court. Whether the trade unions are going to jo join hands with them is, go, is litigation going to be the strategy? Some trade unions have asked for total withdrawal, revocation of the labor code, or is it going to be amendments of the labor codes? And what are the legal cells of the central trade unions doing? Are they working on uh, making uh, you know, uh, amendments to be submitted to the government? Um, I mean, there are two strategies, either revocation, litigation, or progressive amendments uh, via the parliament route and is there any way that ILO could be involved in the reworking of the labor codes in a constructive manner? I am very sorry to uh, note here that government of India has not utilized the ILO's technical assistance the way some countries like China had used. I had done uh, in-depth research on China's uh, uh, labor labor uh, law reforms in 2008, and I spoke to ILO officials there, and uh, China could consult uh, ILO. I have not seen any uh, reports saying that Indian government has consulted with ILO in any way. My final question is that 
why did not the central trade unions join the farmers agitation of revocation of farm laws by asking for revocation of central the four labor codes did they miss the golden opportunity did could they have not joined the uh, farmers agitation and ask for revocation if at all it is if they are going to ask for revocation personally that is not the line that i advocate but strategically have they missed a golden chance these are some of the teasers that i uh, pose to them and i look forward to an exciting discussion and i am i am sure there are many people students are attending from xlri and this and other places and uh, i request the panelists to take the discussion forward by looking at the future or the strategy i know they will not be able to tell whatever they have in their uh, midst but some broad outline and their views that would be helpful so with this preliminary remarks uh, of course we have i mean i would before I inviting i want to say that we have dr rashmi venkateshan who is a well known uh, 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 you know uh, professor of uh, labor law and we are also having a very well known national reporter mr prashant ananda to be reporting he is uh, he, he works for the mint paper so with with these preliminary remarks may now request to comrade amita guha national secretary central trade center of indian trade unions to uh, start the discussion thank you very much Uh, Amit Avasari, you'll have to unmute. Yeah. Uh, I think I am audible. Yes, you are audible. Sir. Please go ahead. So, good evening, everybody, and uh, I thank the organizers, including uh, Father Fernandez, Sham Shundar, and others, for inviting me to attend this meeting. I will precisely. see couple of things first point is that the title of this meeting uh future of codes but i will speak on the future of trade union rights in the perspective of the codes so i i had a different title for my speaking and uh, then the one or two issues out of the track i want to mention here for example shamchunder professor shamchunder has said the participation of lay workers in the pigeon movement is full force participation uh, uh, maybe uh, you are not briefed about it that at, at least citu and the left trade unions we have been regularly meeting with the uh, pigeon leaders our farmer leaders we talk to them take joint program we have in states districts we have involved our people in the movement and spreading the message of the farmers agitation so we are fully involved in them in fact we have been very thickly engaged in uh, farmers peasants and workers unity and we are performing things accordingly now coming to the labor rights uh, i would say first that these codes uh there is hardly any scope for the codes to be amended or discussed anything i can give you instances that right at the beginning of the codes the uh, central trade unions for example my trade union citu we have given amendments to all the codes and uh, rules and before that we insisted the government to have dialogue with the central trade unions government called a brief uh, wave meeting which we boycotted we said that 10 minute speech from each trade union cannot give cannot discuss all the four codes in such a short time so if you have an intention to discuss you have a full fledged discussion for each code and it requires rigorous discussion for example there was a discussion on the wage rules organized by ilo uh from morning 11 to night 9 o'clock we discussed and advocate ramapriya assisted us in the framing the amendments so all central ten central trade unions together we have prepared our amendment to the uh, uh working rules uh, rules on the wages we have sent it to the government and later on we have all 
attended the meetings called by the joint parliamentary committee so all our recommendations and the, even the recommendations of the parliamentary committee has not been heard by you let alone ilo so government has been unidirectionally moving preparing their codes and passing it stealthily during a position when the parliament there was no opposition so as far as parliament record goes it will show that the code was presented when few moments later it was all the codes were passed and there was no opposition no voice of uh, protest or opposition from the other side so that will go on the record now the problem is this <clears throat> as far as future of the workers is concerned the uh, the claim made by the government that they are uh, the courts have been aimed to uh, universalize the facilities and benefits and the legal coverage for everybody but it is otherwise for example that the court has straight away rejected to involve the agricultural workers who constitute about 49% of the total working force so 49% of the working force have kept away then there are about 25 areas which you have marked enlisted and given to the government in our submission that all these sectors workers very large amount of workers for example gig workers scheme workers and many other varieties of workers are not covered under this code therefore the code deprives a large amount of workers under its coverage similarly there are lot of thresholds prepared by in the courts and the thresholds are given in an increased amount than the previous uh, trade union laws as a result more and more people are thrown out then there are various process if you find out totality in totality a vast amount of workers are thrown out and the thresholds are increased for example lockout declaration thresholds is increased in case of your pf esi we have said that reduce the threshold so that a vast amount of workers who are not covered and that social security this benefit should be given to them so they have not included them so they have not only included in many places they have enhanced the threshold so that more and more workers are deprived from the benefits of the trade union this is evident i, I am not making any postulations or any uh, observations out of the context so if you go through the code you will find that a vast amount of workers are now would be deprived then come the issues about the recognition of trade unions i i i, I do not want to go by clause by clause or in details because of the time limits and repetition could be because most of us in this in this panel we know the <coughs> we know the codes contents of the codes we have involved in criticism and everybody you know but i just highlight want to highlight couple of things that why we are worried about the future of trade union rights for example the courts four courts and lot of the uh, working rules have been also prepared and some working rules are more rigorous and some working rules are deceptive some working rules are depriving more workers more than the courts for example there was in the working rule they have increased the working hours working hours number one convention of ilo is violated and when the states said that they will push people 11 13 states they said that we will not allow the in the covid period or then thereafter also will enhance the working hours per day that violates the uh, ilo's convention number one so we central trade unions we jointly filed complaint to this ilo ILO has issued letter to the government that they should see that the state should not insist for work enhanced working hours it has not worked the government or anybody in the states and anywhere they do not bother what the advisories are coming from ILO so there is the ILO's limitation for example recently we have written very thoroughly that how the imposition of a uh, uh, different sector ordinance that ordinance violates umpteen number of ilo decisions ilo's convention etc open flouting of these things 
and only yesterday we found that ILO has sent the complaints made by trade unions. We CITU and uh, our AITUC also made complaint against this. So they have sent uh, the whole complaints to the government for their um, response on the complaints we have made. So therefore, there are umpteen number of violations spreaded around. And then the major two, three issues I wanted to say, which, will, which has put, already put people into trouble, or workers into trouble. One is fixed term, term employment. This fixed term employment in the court, it was very, from the, uh, behind the parliament, it was pushed initially. Now it has been accommodated in the court, making it a legal entity that fixed term employment it is a frank deception of the basic fundamental rights of the workers. And following this, many large sector companies, particularly in automobiles, they have started recruiting people massively in the uh, fixed term employment. And fixed term employment, what the reception? They said that they will enjoy all the facilities like other workers. They said that they will also get gratuity. Gratuity, they say that after five years work, they will get gratuity. But fixed term employment is for temporary being. Anytime they will be thrown out, five, five years <coughs> will never be accessible to any of them. It's a great deception. And it, this, is a, <coughs> this is an opportunity given to the employers to create a worse conditions for worse than the contractual workers condition. People will be recruited, they have already started recruiting, people will be recruited and then they will be temporary and they will replace the permanent workers, regular workers, that's the process they have legalized. That's the problem for us. They have legalized these temporary workers. Then think about the <clears throat> fundamental rights, trade union registration. I do not want to go into details. First of all, they say that 10% is the eligibility criteria for registration. This 10% to get 10% workers in larger sectors is practically impossible. And then even if you fulfill the conditions, the right has been given to the authorities. Even after you fulfill all the conditions, your registration may be canceled. Their registration may not be approved. And you don't have any scope to go for challenging it. And because you, you are till that time, you are not registered, you cannot challenge this like all other already registered trade unions. So there are problems. Second, see, the very formation of trade union is been challenged, is been compromised with these laws. And then if you think about the another fundamental right, the right to strike. Right to strike means what? It is practically, it has been made impossible. You will have to take permission for this, for going into strike. Earlier, it was only for essential service sector, but now it has been given to everybody. So to, to, to go for a strike, if you go through the clauses of the uh, industrial relation code, you will find that they say that you will have to give a notice to is before the strike you have decided, and then it will be sent to the conciliation. Conciliation officer will call both the parties. He will go ahead with the conciliation. Now, if the conciliation officer has some conflict of interest with the employers, he can stretch it with any plea for a long time. And even after the verdict is given, after 60 days, you can go for action before 60 days you can. So virtually to go for a strike would be virtually impossible. And even if, and then other thing they have done, they have been given two major things for the employers that all the provisions, the employers are given umpteen amount of exemptions and the workers are given stringent punishment clauses, 25,000 rupees for uh, calling or participating uh, 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 illegal strike, etc. When the strike is in, declared illegal, the leaders will be caught and they'll put behind bars or they'll be fined, penalized for 25,000. So th there are a lot of many things they have given employers to utilize it. For example, they have reduced the in the wage, they have reduced the wage quantum by taking away the alliances and other benefits. So the real takeaway uh, package is reduced and the uh, legal, legal dues 
to be recovered from the workers' wages for their future would also be reduced, resulting to a term that at the time of retirement, at the time of retrenchment, they will get much, much less than they, what they would have used to get it from the previous laws and acts. There has been every level of penal provisions, things are reduced. Everywhere it is reduced. Then most importantly, the SES fund is a very big question that there are huge amount of large amount of SES fund has been totally abolished, like BD workers, like the uh, mine workers, like the <clears throat> cine workers, all the SES funds have been abolished. And the huge amount of money accumulated, for example, in BOCU, building another construction workers uh, SES, they are, they are the, the board. They have Emma accumulated several thousand crores of money in their fund, which has not been utilized. What will be the future of this fund? And what will be the SES amount and how the SES will be collected, disbursed, etc. Then again, Amtin number of uh, leverage has been given to the employers in the way of giving lot of lot many benefits for them to deprive the workers. As I have said, that the even in the EPF, for example, EPF the whole system has been changed in such a manner that the board for the uh, that central board of uh, trustees. This has been, their role has been diluted. They had no power. They will have no power, no decision-making position, although it has not fully abolished. But then the state boards for the these <coughs> things workers had been abolished. So there has been this kind of benefits that have been given and the penalties in every stages are reduced for the employers. Then, then there are infringement of internal matters. See that that there has been infringement in, in, in holding the meetings and internal matter of the unions are also infringed because they have, for example, in the uh, court, uh, in the, in the, they have issued the new process for representation of the trade unions. In the representation of the trade unions, there are 10 clauses, excepting number one clause, which is giving the definition. All the clauses are rejected. All the clauses are impossible to put it. And I'm very briefly, I'm saying that it is also interfering the internal right of the trade unions, that how you will have your meetings, how many process you will follow. For example, that selection, selection, the, the employers will prepare, they will appoint the people for verifying the membership of the union. Just imagine the employers will be deputing person of their own choice for verifying, for taking the, during the attending the meeting and taking the vote of the workers, employer will put it. Earlier it was given to the uh, labor authorities. Now it is employers have been given. Employers have been empowered to feed them, to give them money. Everything has been designed in such a manner that the total thing, the selection and representation of the recognition of the trade unions will become a first. Then comes the issue that they, this also says that you have the after this, this, if you have any problem with any members of yours, if you want to penalize your or put a punishment for your own members for violation of the trade union's rights and other things, they, they, it, it will be judged by the authorities. Your internal democracy will be taken away by the authorities. Like that, there are empty number of things which are existing things have been taken away and representation of the trade unions will automatically reduce or it will be cut. New representation will be in a problem and it will be automatically cut and many trade unions will lose their right to representation. So these are the things I wanted to point out. Number one, that umpteen number of benefit has been given both in the way of wages and earning by snatching away the rights of the workers and penal provisions and the provisions of the SES, everything has been given to the employers for their benefit 
and workers are squeezed to the end and finally they will not be able to perform their basic trade union fundamental rights and now as uh, uh, professor shamsundar very rightly pointed out before i end i wanted to put one or two points for example what i look and do i look and not do anything the government never bothered government do not believe in tripartism we have been asking ilo to involve in it there was a committee of tripartite committee of conventions this ilo convention tripartite committee is abolished nowhere called the indian labor conference has been abolished after 15, 2015 no meeting has been called so far despite our reminder nothing has been called so this government do not believe the ilo's fundamental process of tripartism and this has been followed so far any damn government has come they have not abolished this tripartism this government do not believe on tripartism particularly workers and trade unions are i sure to them so therefore trade unions had to go for further militant program amendment of the laws question doesn't arise they will not listen already parliamentary committee trade unions written representation for each courts and rules had been ignored deliberately therefore they will not listen any amendment there is hardly any scope and after it is passed in the parliament and who will speak in the parliament today's parliament has become real farce so one sided arbitrary move is going on here trade unions for example my central trade union we have decided to go for higher phase of move we will defy everything already we have told our unions to notify their management that they will not work beyond 8 hours said whatever what comes or no so they will definitely tell they will represent they give it represent to their employers that they will not work beyond 8 hours and the previous system of overtime work should be utilized no further increase of working hours nothing and the, the uh, say labor secretary said that what's the problem 12 hours work they will do and 3 days they will give leave he doesn't know that he is making this rule for more work but then the parent act which is a labor code labor code doesn't allow he went beyond the labor code when he formulated the rules so these are the things they are doing whatever they like it is an absolute traversity of truth it is trampling of the fundamental right of the workers and workers are geared up now to go for larger movement and intensify their agitation against this code so all the central trade unions have rejected in central trade unions have rejected wholeheartedly whole hog rejected the codes and the rules and with that we are going already our workers have burned the codes a day has been observed they will go for higher phase of movement we are gearing up our organization to do that thank you everybody thank you comrade uh, for a for a very incisive analysis of the labor codes perhaps you have set the stage for uh, others to uh, you know not too much uh, not to dwell much on the shortcomings of the labor codes you have comprehensively covered the shortcomings in the labor codes and you have uh, you have seen labor uh, labor codes is equal to labor trade union rights and i just want to dispel one particular uh, point of mine which you i mean there could be my articulation problem i said that along with the farmers agitation for revocation of uh, for farm laws why did not the central trade unions also demand or think of the strategy to demand revocation of the four labor codes i did not uh, say that trade un central trade unions did not support the farmers agitation or take forward the farmers agitation i said that parallelly could there have been have um, could there have been a movement on the part of central trade unions and the working class industrial working class demanding revocation of four labor codes that was my question maybe yeah, my yeah. articulation was not uh, no 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 no, no shamsundar i understand you i i sent all my our circulars major circulars to you so you will find in some of the circulars we have informed everybody that all the 10 central trade unions to their rep joint representation they asked revocation of the all codes and the rules we i'm aware no no i'm already. aware i'm aware comrade but i thought i mean uh, uh, cs situ could have done it internally but as a as a movement no. as a movement was there any 
why did the central trade unions did not come together if they if there was a consensus that was my question in terms no, of no, movement no. i i okay. understand i am aware okay. all the trade unions are Share protesting my, uh, please listen i will yes. send you again the seven points common charter we have prepared jointly by the central trade unions where your all postulations are already accommodated so yeah. no anxiety is required you have already done it my partner uh, or our leader uh, amarjit is there she will also put more information but we have already done it so yeah thank uh, 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 thanks they they are they are in print i was talking on the movement on the streets uh, but uh, uh, you you have uh, you have given a very broad perspective of a critique of the labor courts but i would now request the other trade union leaders to concentrate more on their future strategies and what they think of litigation ilo uh, having a mass movement or a micro level dissent what what they have in their bag so uh, building on what comrade amita goha has uh, given a widespread critique of the labor courts we are all aware of various deficits and various ways in which the labor rights are getting hurt so i would like we would like to hear more on the future strategy a concrete strategy if there is any or also on the trade union unity front and what they are going to do also one question is that lot of state governments have introduced lot of labor reforms one question i have is that what is the need for the national labor code everything is done at the state level the trade unions are caught un unaware of that so with these remarks i request mr chandraprakash singh national vice president intc to take the discussion forward on the future strategy on the strategy of the trade union from the future of the labor force thank you very much uh, okay brother uh, sam sundar ji thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, namaste to uh, uh, all of you and uh, our veteran central trade union leaders uh, uh, sister amarjit kaur and amitabh guha and brijesh tupadhyay ji i on behalf of intuc pay my respect to uh, denjil uh, uh, father denjil fernandez uh, sam sundar uh, ji or uh, prashant k nanda uh, rasmi venkatesan and arjun ji also uh, who uh, are participating in this meeting also uh, i am thankful uh, for inviting me to this program the subject on which you have called to discuss a very serious matter and is related to more than 400 million dwelling work, uh, workers of the country we cannot talk on this matter only confined to some section of courts or rules because on the soldiers of these toiling laborers workers the responsibility to develop the country building infrastructure and taking forward the various sectors of employment and production as well as service and health sectors of the country unfortunately even after 74 years have gone of independence we do not want to understand the importance of these poor workers better measures are not being taken regarding their uh, 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 their uh, service or work security service conditions about their salary and social security etc now now in a days you can you see how many government jobs will be available in the coming time this has become a big question till few years back we could clearly see the difference between organized and unorganized sector but today the situation has completely changed now the unorganized sector employment is increasing in all the organized sector as well the nature of employment has completely changed now employment of permanent nature will be a matter of history in the coming times 
now more jobs will be are available uh, in uh, as a contract labor and uh, uh, and limited time only uh, but you can say as a term employment and implementation of labor laws in such employment uh, will not even be possible we are facing today also as far the trade union are concerned the government has inserted many such provisions in the industrial relations codes rules due to which the power of the union will be greatly weakened we will also discuss uh, uh, some of the provisions but you have as a samsundar ji has told that already uh, brother uh, amitab guha has uh, elaborated so many provisions so I, i will not tell about that and i uh, but but in the meantime i i i uh, uh, greatly thankful to uh, father fernandes who have uh, the, uh, who have uh, clearly what he, he told uh, this is our views also and our, also brother sam sundar has told so uh, i will not go uh, on uh, on that uh, court section we will also discuss uh, 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 before that as an example just i, I want to give an example uh, we uh, we want to tell i want to tell uh, that both the policy and the intention of the central government Uh, you will understood what i am telling there is a big conspiracy to take away the constitutional democratic and legal rights of the employees involved in defense sector you can see the uh, defense production through the essential defense services ordinance 2000, uh, 2021 brought recently by the central, uh, central government and attacked on the right to uh, uh, right of right to a strike uh, even you go for agitation they will send to jail they will uh, make an fir and uh, send to jail so what the government is doing uh, uh, I, I, i and not only myself but everybody you better know no 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 know about this on the one hand lakhs of people the, you the, see the situation of today is we the government the country is suffering lakhs of people have lost their lives due to the dreadful grip of covid-19 epidemic in the entire country even at this time instead of fighting with epidemic the central government is fighting with the farmers laborers and the common people of the country who are agitating for their demands and rights against the farmers and laborers of the country the central government made the covid-19 epidemic an opportunity and during this corona period parliament passed three black uh, laws of uh, relating to the farmers and also three black uh, 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 labor courts related to the uh, laborers the whole country is struggling with the problems like inflation unemployment education and health and the central government is making every conspiracy to end the labor and farmers movement as well as mass movement also as for the subject uh, uh, today subject is concerned what will be the effect of the labor courts in future on labor movements or on the service condition of the workers or on the social, social security and implementation of the labor laws you see four labor courts rules just uh, what is the views of all central trade unions i want to make it clear that the alliance of the central trade unions in the country include including intuc have decided that in labor, uh, uh, that labor reforms in the name of ease of doing business will not be accepted and our protest will continue against the government approach and that is being given Uh, what they, uh, that that the power is given to the capitalist and the multi multi national companies through this uh, reforms we cannot accept this uh, uh, codification under any circumstances it is unfortunate that the central government has closed the meeting of indian labor conference since 2015 the policy making platform of the workers of the country the central government has weakened 
the traditional bi bi bilateral dialogue the government is not ready to consider the trade union views central trade union organization are continuously fighting this anti worker move of the government we also in close contact with the ilo office you as you as you as you questioned about the ilo uh, what we are doing with the uh, ilo so 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 i i want to clear uh, you that we are close contact with the ilo but as, as brother uh, abhishek told that the ilo has limited uh, power to intervene in the country matter but from time to time the representative of the ilo together with the representatives of the central trade unions have presented a number of suggestions regarding the labor codes rules but the government is not ready to accept even the ilo's proposal also the parliament has also ratified you know ilo convention 144 this is a good this is good but despite its ratification the government is not ready for bilateral uh, uh, dialogue or tripartite dialogue in this uh, today i i i abhijesh uh, upadhyay ji who is representing bms i would like to congratulate uh, bms for the letter written in this regard to the prime minister sri narendra modi ji in which uh, they have also demanded to convene a meeting of the indian labor conference friends crores of people have lost their jobs and uh, uh, jobs uh, during this covid pandemic along with this the central government needs to consider this by convening a meeting of indian labor conference regarding you see salary cut is still continuing uh, in uh, many uh, uh, factories and uh, organizations uh, 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 problems of migrant laborers laborers are continue continuing labor reforms still you are seeing what is happening condition of unorganized workers social securities and deteriorating economic condition of women of this country etc so immediately government should call the indian labor conference to 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 uh, uh, hear all this matter as far as the old labor laws have been abolished and brought in new form of the four labor uh, new labor laws uh, against the interest of it is totally against the interest of workers with regard to labor laws the government has completely confused the situation they are not even uh, announcing what the labor code will um, finalize they are they, they are talking uh, since uh, uh, last seven years they have they have put uh, uh, in abeyance all the labor laws previously Uh, uh, and not implementing even uh, today's labor department is not working and new labor new labor courts are also in pendulum so the completely the government has completely put on hold the investigation of complete uh, complaints regarding violation of labor laws also the inspector will now meet the managers of the institution as a facilitator they will not inspect the factory and uh, they, they will not uh, file the complaint against the management against the violation of the labor laws but but they will facilitate them they will request them uh, to to follow the labor laws but they will not do anything the workers can take initiative you see just amitab my brother amitab was telling the workers can take initiative from the management regarding their problems and demands to to negotiate but the government has made arrangement to stop the agitation and their uh, uh, strike as well and have made it punishable you see when you will put the demand with the management this uh, and and you have to give the copy to the conciliation officer when you will serve the demand the 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 same time uh, the uh, uh, concili you have to presume that conciliation has just started even conciliation is not started but you have to presume that conciliation is just started and you will not go for agitation and strike this is the provision in the industrial relation code so you can imagine how the government will how the workers will protest and workers will go on strike so the role of the minister and now 
the role of the Ministry of Labor or the uh, department, uh, Labor Department in the state, as per the instruction of the central government, has now become very soft towards the employer. The central government talks about amending labor laws to support the management on ease of doing business, privatization, term employment, outsource, but government doesn't talk about the decent work, universal social security, living wage, security of job or work, and a strict implementation of labor laws. A big question arises about the better future of, of the hardworking laborers in coming time. And the labor organization of the country have to continuously find the answer of this situation. So I would like to draw your attention about this, the, the, that the, all the central trade unions, we have to find the answer of this situation. And, 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 and if we will simply fight, government is not going to hear anything of the uh, uh, workers' um, uh, movement. So anything you want to, uh, you are uh, raising your hand, Brother Sam Sundar. Uh, but you see, just you see uh, two, three points I, I want to say that even in the, uh, when you will see the industrial relation code or provision of on trade unions, right to a strike, everything, even retrenchment threshold, all you know, I don't want to uh, go on this uh, 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 clause by clause or section by section, but only I want to say that you have rightly said that we have to plan about the uh, future course of action about uh, the, the uh, labor courts, how to how we can stop it. But uh, you are, we have also raised the question about the uh, farmers education, how we have uh, any coalition with the farmers movement or not. Uh, uh, brother Amitabh has told we have, oh no, 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 any, anything, okay, then you will clear, I will told, but we are, we are coalition with the farmers movement. We have also raised that uh, you, you uh, withdraw the uh, three farmers uh, laws as well as the four labor courts also. We are not asking about any amendment. We are not going to accept any amendment. We have strictly demanded that you withdraw this labor court. That's all. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Sam Sundar. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chandra Prakash Singh for articulating the views of the one of the Central Trade Unions, INTUC. So the mood that is, uh, uh, you know, that is emanating from the two discussions is that the trade central trade unions do not accept the labor codes and the rules as they are in the current form. So they are, and of course there is, they are knocking at the doors of the government for social dialogue. They are also uh, working with the ILO. Now, um, you also pointed out uh, various limitations in the central labor courts, but still my, my sense of, uh, uh, there is a sense of unease in, in my mind that are the trade unions becoming desperate that this government will not listen, nothing will happen. So, uh, the, I mean, I would like to know from the re uh, remaining two, is there any kind of Political mobilization. But, but, right, right, but but I want to clarify. Not not we are not frustrated or no no. no I am I am I am. It is an unease in my mind. No no no. We, we we are clear about this that government is not ready to hear anything. Yeah yeah. I, I, I understand okay. that the government is not responsive to the voices of the trade unions. Then how to get around this? That is a conundrum. That is a problem. That no, we, no, we have also we invited have to, BMS BMS to join this movement. Yeah, because I'm, I'm time sure. Time, but time, because time to time they are also opposing the government move. So it, it will be nice to have a, a joint movement and the BMS would also join the hand uh, with the central trade unions. So, uh, so this I, is. Uh, I will leave it to uh, Mr. Upadhyaya to uh, make his own observations. And I'm thankful to you, Mr. Chandraprakash Prakash Singh, for, uh, uh, give, uh, for strengthening the. Uh, powerful voices uh, of protests and uh, con contestation made by Comrade Amita Guga. <clears throat> uh, and I, you also said that uh, 
we, uh, you know, the government has not considered even the proposals from ILO. That would be a very interesting thing to know more about. But I think I will uh, now uh, wait to hear from Mr. Rajesh Upadhyaya, who was the ex-national secretary of BMS and currently the executive, uh, currently the director general of uh, research and intellectual uh, uh, department of BMS. Sir, over to you. And please, let's talk about the future of labor courts and the trade union strategy. And you may respond to Mr. Chandra Prakash Singh's uh, invite Thank you. for uh, Thank unity you. friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, respected chair of uh, this session, Father Fernandes, and uh, my very near and dear friend, uh, Shyam Sundarji, uh, who called me to be here. I'm really thankful to him. My colleagues and panelists, Sister Amarjit Kaur, uh, Brother Amitabh Gua, and uh, of course, uh, my very lovely friend, uh, C.P. Singh Ji. Again, Prashant Nanda Ji, very closely too. And uh, other academics, uh, Dr. Arjun Kumar and others. And the uh, audience, those who are connected over web portal. Warm greetings from BMS to all of you. The content of today, the future of labor code impact in Bay Forward. I especially for this purpose have a very different perspective to speak here. Different I mean, not that much difference. It will be very close to approach Sam Sundarji had made here. I don't want to go into post-mortem job what happened, how happened, I think it is not going to serve the purpose. The purpose of today is what is happened, happened it is already. What trade unions are supposed to do to overcome from this situation. So when I go into this aspect, so sometimes I feel whether this should be called labor laws. I find no merit to call it labor law. It is business law. After independence of 75 years, so far we could not bring the employment policy. Industrial policy has been brought number of times. It's a revision this, that. And equally, we could not bring the labor laws the last so far we are terming it in labor law. It is actually how to govern the business and the components coming on the way to govern the business. There is a labor also, so they are addressing the labor also. Otherwise, if you recall the recent economic survey, 93% of uh, workforce is in the informal sector. So 93% is out of ambit of this labor law. And again, rest 7% workers, those who are employed directly by the government, again, they are not part of these labor laws. So if you go and audit practically, so how much it is going to cover? 3%, 4%, whatever. I'm not going to the uh, data but a very small fraction of workforce is coming under the labor laws. So I have a very uh, big issue to discuss, to debate wherever I'm going, I'm asking, even I'm asking governments also, whether really these are intending to address the labor laws, labor concerns, so it is not. If you see in these four codes, what IR code says, and what OSH courts is, these two are exclusively addressing the business and how to protect the business, their boundaries, their working, rest of the things, and how to keep workers away. A very little small protection is given. 
again uh, because sham sundar ji said and uh, i also think uh, going into class by class which is class uh, what is it is saying i uh, need not to be all are aware to that my big and bold issue is it should not be called labor laws labor laws should be thought fresh as a second labor commission has observed as many other academics are coming and what the ground reality is putting all the laborers formal informal together their welfare their rights if it is not ensured it is not the labor law it is one issue the very next issue is talking about the labor laws what so ever its a book arrangement and its a practical implementation they are again there are the two aspect to discuss discussing the book arrangement to whom it is going to sir we are having contract labor regulation abolition you know sham sundar ji know he is master man after bringing this law whether we could stop the uh, contractualization it has gone number of time ahead so the question comes whether these book based laws or arrangements are working helping the labor practically actually if not what are the rules the last year migrant issues it is sometime uh, 79 or what uh, who knows this so what rules means for the persons those who needs to get it implemented if it is not enforced not implemented whatever region may be again there is a big issue for a poor person for a worker having rule and having no rule they have no meaning to and the third question is concern of the leaders and concern of the common man again there are the aspects to address and the bridge the gap between the approach of the leaders and the necessity practical aspect of the workers at the ground putting all these two three four five issues together i am strongly of the opinion labor laws should be thought fresh bring a fresh considering entire workers may be part of salaried structure or may be uh, own account whatever term we are using so far entire workforce should be part of legislation then it will be called as a labor law and uh, the very next one is so far our struggle we need to focus uh, what is missing in this enforcement is a big issue even after having laws its implementation has become an issue my brother uh, guha has said my brother uh, uh, cp singh has expressed uh, rules are there but not implemented ilc is not lot of things are there and uh, if it is not then what simply our observations will work are some action required to be when it comes to action then what action and i have told when uh, uh, we have been sitting jointly i told my friends we all had been there that time comrade gurdas ji was there and uh, all the senior leaders were there we were sitting inside the room i asked them we are sitting inside the room we need to think whether our practices so far is converting into result or getting it uh, benefited to the persons for whom we are struggling fighting i said okay after moving out of this room we will uh, say in very fiery words and very loudly ki uh, we could save the world we could save all this so that's uh, the correct thing but can we go for the reality audit once in spite of having rule in spite of having all the trade union central number 1 number 
we could not stop contractualization we could not stop many 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 i'm not going to detail as per that so 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 what is missing within ours it is not one way you are you are you are sometime it needs internal introspection also whether the existing practices of the trade union movement and i used to say the traditional practices traditional tools of the trade union movements has lost the relevance we need to find new tools to address some such many time it is coming whether there is unity or not of course there is unity there is no question of uh, there is no unity at all all the workers organizations are together when it's a workers concern in coal industry we all had been we fought together and uh, very recently it is ongoing in defense we are all together who says ki we are not together for questions i am inviting bms or i am not inviting bms where is workers concern i don't expect any invitation later we are already there but for the workers concern not for the labor politics we would like to say we distinguish between the labor welfare and the labor politics for the labor welfare bms is ready to finish finish its identity but for the labor politics we will not go even a single step towards we are not for the politics so labor welfare is the core concern and the labor welfare is the only area and whenever wherever labor's concerns are there there is no issue no one can say ki bms is not there or c2 is not there we all are there and i we are so friendly there you can find even on this labor laws also we have submitted plus by uh, our uh, objections reservation whatever we have given it just bms has formed around the 35 uh, persons group of this uh, uh, legal cell of uh, within the organization 30 35 people are working justly on each and every rules and uh, uh, that uh, and in that moment we have gone very jaty two three four sittings then we came to uh, a conclusion then we came and submitted our objections whatever and uh, wherever we are going so no one should have any such impression in the mind that indian trade unions are divided indian trade unions workers organization are very well united for the worker concern no one can break us no one can i am Uh, telling it very loudly no issue to understand that uh, there is a division and uh, anyone can divide us of course sir we are a different organization with the different concepts uh, with the different ideology that that are there that's why he uh, bms intax it too it is it is going to remain there but we are working on the same domain same area same concern so no question that uh, uh we are working moving separately so uh, the my my third bold this one is the internal introspection within the trade union movement is most required and the fourth one that to also bms has put a proposal uh within the uh, central trade union all central trade union groups ki can be have a intellectual backup uh, forest then one of our friends said ki bhai it is a uh, casting very much a huge cast is involved then we said jointly we are 10 15 uh, 10 to uh, 12 organizations can be jointly not afford it then we said yes of course so can we all put together cannot have a intellectual backup for us the issue came when uh, uh, alba ja government is uh, putting uh, coming up with a draft this is going to this should be why not trade unions are coming he uh, suggest that this should be then they said ki bhai uh, from trade union side it's very just if we don't have that much intellectual backup this is a lot of issues come then we came to say bms suggested 
can be all together jointly we can have our own intellectual backup group experts we can hire it whatever cost involves putting all 10 uh, 12 central trade you know we can afford the cost there is no issue we can do it But that idea could not go for the so again can be go to think all such things the fight is very different the entire discourse is completely changed a digital push has taken its space acquired entire space the trade in your leadership the cadre entire setup needs to be reoriented retrained into how to address all such aspects so this, this aspects is also very important aspect a uh, trade union should think and uh, again again bms is open to uh, have a joint uh, this one uh, to uh, get the assistance back up from for all sort of requirements within the trade union movement be required so this is the basic uh, uh, i think requirement uh, looking to inside the trade unions what uh, big need we have how to overcome and how to address can by our own organization something we have to do we can do within our zone something uh, we have to do we can do jointly putting our efforts together and the last one is trade unions have never been on the mercy of the government in no time never in the past in the history trade unions have never because government has assisted given some uh, benefit they get trade union emergencies because of their resistance their power of resistance their strength of resistance so we know we are not depend on mercy of any of the government and in no time i have completed 40 years in the trade union movement i have not seen any trade strike have been declared legal so who is betting for you you allow us or not if i have power if i have strength if we are this much strengthen enough who who cares you so the basic uh, fundamental exist within the trade union movements what we can do that needs to be addressed first if we can get prepared ourselves future of the indian workers future of the labor movement many academics are coming down trade unions are declining who told you yaar it is declining it is your book assessment come on the ground how you come to conclude it is declining movement no no it is divided many researchers are coming to me wow. it is a very fragmented it is divided who told you no there are 10 yes of course we are born separately but we are working jointly we may have been different colors of flags ideas so whatever it is but the ultimate object of uh, all the central trade unions it is the same so why you are looking uh, the glass is half empty why not you see the my glass is half full see with the positivity the future the fate of indian workers indian trade union movement is bright in my consensus my conclusion little work is required to done something is within our soul inside of course we need to look if any one of uh, from my friends say ki bhai i don't need to look our inside but i think uh, something is missing that should not be we always need to look whether i am okay whether i am ready whether i am prepared whether i have got that much sufficient then after getting all preparedness move out outside we all are together and together we can fight anyone anyone we have fought with the foreign imperialism with the foreign issues these are the our own government we have plus them there we can bring them down also it is our might we jointly can do to a lot of introspection is required within this movement and we are lucky enough still i find almost in all the central trade unions at least at the upper level still there are people of the greater understanding deeper understanding in spite of having all such 
we do call each other every when we are meeting we are smiling we are laughing are we are not enemies yaar we are a very close family persons so with this i think uh, in my opinion a great and a very bright future is ahead with some corrective measures what is required within our we will do and we will correct the entire discourse what is get our needs corrected from outside with this i conclude thank you again uh, brother shyam sundar ji and to all of you thank you brother very much uh, thank you uh, mr upadhyay for uh, i mean there are three um, central arguments of yours number 1 trade union is united number 2 trade unions are not on the decline as academics would uh, imagine and number 3 uh, bms along with other trade unions do not accept this as a labor code this is a business code and not a labor code but you made some three very important points uh, which i wish to highlight number 1 you called for internal introspection within the trade union movement you also noted that the traditional tools or methods used by the trade union movement need to be reviewed by the trade union movement and of course um, you uh, you also said that uh, trade union movement must build build its own intellectual resources or use the resources available in the larger society and the 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 fundamental point is that bms like other trade unions are also opposed to the labor courts and they do not approve of the labor courts in the way that they have been drafted thanks for providing these insights and uh, in any function we keep the fireworks at the end so i i think now it's time to invite comrade amarjit kau general secretary all india trade union congress for giving us the fireworks and the final uh, observations which could build on the earlier uh, submissions and powerful observations made before i give the floor to her i we want to we academics and journalists and all of us in the larger society want to affirm that we view trade trade unions as the vanguard of the working class as a central powers of resistance and sorts of justice this view will not be altered at any cost we assure i as a moderator on behalf speaking on behalf of the larger society assure over to you comrade amarjit kaur thank you very much thank you chair of the webinar today father fernandez moderator uh, professor k r sham sundar ji my co panelists and discussants and all those who are participants uh, the audience the researchers all those who are interested and all those who would like to do something for the labor uh, <clears throat> i have heard very keenly everybody but first thing which i want to say uh sham sundar ji i think uh, we should accept uh, we have demanded uh, these labor codes we don't accept in this present form uh, we have uh, already said that each labor code needs to be revisited and then only talk about rule framing uh, we have also said uh, that uh, uh, the government should not go ahead with it not even on 1st october it needs to be revisited uh, we have also said that indian labor conference should look into this uh, it should pass through tripartism uh, which it has not done and uh, uh, it has not passed the test of parliament also it should pass the test of parliament because in parliament only ruling party was sitting ministers and their mps whole of opposition was absent 
So when Indian Labour Conference is not invited and no discussion happened, and Indian Parliament, the highest seat of democracy, even their opposition was absent. So how can we accept these labor codes in present form? We may name it anything. We may, may name it a business code, as Rajesh is saying, or we may say it as a, an attitude of the government to do away with whatever uh, better things are there in the world of labor. Everything is not good in the labor uh, labor world, but whatever good was there, even that to be uh, taken away. Now, uh, your question, I begin with questions, then only all that what my friends have said, I will make little additions into that. Uh, your uh, question was the of course, we supported the farmers' movement. Uh, you know, we asked for uh, uh, repeal of those three farm laws, as well as uh, uh, electricity bill amendment, which government brought. Simultaneously, we said uh, the labor courts should be withdrawn. Uh, we uh, moved with the pace when uh, farmers ultimately put into their demands and in their campaigns, at least, Demands, of course, are ours, but into their campaigns, they started telling that they are demanding repeal of farm laws. We, Kisan Morcha, will demand for repeal of four labor courts. So we proceeded up to that level. Second level where we could reach was that they said the corporates want to grab their lands, so we will not allow it. And our battle is not only our battle, it is for the stomach of all Indians. So Essential Commodities Act will go against all people of the country, including the labor. So our battle is not for farmers, our battle is for the whole nation. And we recognize what they said, because food security of about migrant workers, which we were talking a little bit, friends were talking about, uh, they very much depend on a uh, vast majority of them on this whole issue of food security. So from that point of view, I would agree that we reached uh, uh, a little ahead that we said government's eye is on the lands of public sector. And Kisans are saying government's eye is on the farmland. So we are opposing corporates taking over our public sector and government privatizing. And they are opposing and saying our land of farmers should not be taken away. The land is a state subject. And labor is also state subject. So the federal structure is also being put under stake. So this is my additional point. It's not only that the farmers are saying why the federal structure is not being respected by government of India, we the trade unions are also saying how you can try to impose without consulting state governments at the formulating stage itself. In the formulating stage itself, drafting stage itself, the trade unions, the uh, governments, uh, state governments, uh, the employers, everybody needs to be taken on board. But nobody was taken on board except that the employers, their um, unilateral views were accepted by the government. But all three were not made to sit in the Indian Labor Conference. Now, having said that thing, I also uh, want to say um, that it is true that we could not build up the movement as much it should have been. Let us accept this reality. If we accept this reality, then only we will be much more serious to develop our movements. I am not denying that we have conducted several strikes since new liberal economy in 1991, when it was declared. We have passed through seven strikes during Modiji's period also. So we have done the strikes. We have done big morchas. We did a three days continuous uh, morcha at parliament. Every day between 70,000 to 1 lakh people were there. 
we did that also and we did all india campaigns also we succeeded in having strike during covid on 26 november in 2020 but the way the attack is is it sufficient if you look at that then uh, uh, professor sham sundar i look in a look into the point which you are making it is bigger movements larger movements consolidated movements expanding movements substantiated movements are needed because attacks are too big farmers succeeded in taking their points in simple language to every farm household including we succeeded in telling our workers what does it mean when these farm laws uh, which are converted into act what will it mean for the common people and the workers but let me tell you this is true that we have not succeeded till date about four codes and their dangers to be taken to the large masses our own workers families we are uh, addressing our constituencies our workers of course our unions and now we are telling them to take it to the families also but the way farm laws reach the common people these codes are such a serious issue for the workers of india we could not create that impression among other sections of the society including our vast majority of informal workers unorganized sector workers so the fire will happen if everybody understands how dangerous these four codes are what will be implication to their lives so we need to have a strenuous campaign you are asking what should be the strategy of trade unions of course we should have unity of course we should build unity with farmers of course we should have unity beyond workers and farmers of course we need the people to understand we need to have a strenuous campaign on these dangers which these labor courts are going to put now until and unless that understanding of the scale is there the movement will not be strong and that's where why i want to say when even the unions were not born and uh, uh, they, there was a, uh, there were strikes happening in india and today all my friends talked about how strike itself is being put on hold you won't be able to hold strike if we allow all these codes to be implemented ir code to be implemented or edso which is under debate inside the parliament now if that is implemented so strikes were happening in 19th century itself from 1827 onwards and i also want to tell the royal commission which was set up by the britishers had also to say that you cannot degrade workers you cannot degrade um, uh, the poor uh, people who are laboring no if a colonial master believes and says maybe there was compulsions with them the debates which were happening in britannia maybe that was the compulsion with them for their own businesses but they did say that royal commission talked about it if the royal commission talks about that where are we today in 2021 all these labor courts and the rules if implemented will snatch away the dignity of workers for which even colonial masters royal commission talked about and we have reached a stage where we say the labor laws are human rights and if we are talking of human rights discourse then can we say it is a non political issue i would say the beauty is the beauty is that we trade unions have uh, understand the things but then we have different ways of dealing we have different perceptions we have different view points and that is the beauty of india that pluralism diverse opinions dissenting opinions total freedom of expression and with all those differences you can also move together on certain issues 
And that beauty we get from our constitution. And let me assert, this attack on the workers through these labor codes and these rule framing is on the constitutional morality. This is attack on our constitutional morality. I would also say it is attack on our constitutional ethos, constitutional values. Why I'm saying it until and unless we have that anguish in our hearts, we will not be able to fight. And that anguish has to be understood by our workers. And I want to say, to define that labor welfare is something and labor politics is something, Vrijesh ji has his own opinion. I respect his opinion, but that is his opinion. We look at this situation in a different way. We say Indian working class fought for India's independence. And Indian working class was very much doing politics for freeing our country from colonial masters. But Indian working class knew that they are not political parties. Whenever they wanted political discourse to come, they went to political parties and put forth their demand charter before them. They did not assume the role of political parties ever. So there were unions and unions in the formal and informal sector from 19th century last part from 20th century from the beginning. And then in 1920, first trade union center AITUC was formed, which is known as a mother trade union. So formal informal sector unions were there. And let me tell you, when that AITUC was being formed, Great freedom fighters were part of it, supporting it and even assuming some offices into it. Labor movement was supporting the freedom movement and the freedom movement was support supportive of the labor movement. So there was a division. Political parties were different. Working class movement was different, but the working class had its politics. So labor always had politics. Labor did not talk only about welfare. We talk in terms of rights, our working hours, from where it will come, from the policy of the government. We talked about our wages. Who will decide wages? Wages will come from the policy of the government. We said workplace safety is required and compensation is needed to be given. What was it? It was a politics. Then if we say that we, our unionization should be legalized, we are asking legal. So we got legalized in 1926 when we got the Trade Union Act 1926. So all those laws which we got pre-independence era and then in post-independence era, all those laws come from the policies of the government. So if the policies of the government can help and bring in a better life for the working masses of the country, but the policies of the government can ruin the lives of the working classes and the working masses of the country. Policies of the government can bring in better revenues as through government employees, through the public sector employees, all the better life, those who are enjoying the fruits of labor laws and the social security from the parliament and from various legislations where a vast majority of our unorganized sector worker workforce is left out, which even Brijeshji accepted it. All trade unions accepted that vast majority of workforce is out of the purview of present labor legislations. But if the present day government wants to throw out even those who are protected, most of them to be excluded from there. So if their policies are harming us, to challenge those policies is labor politics. It is not labor welfare. It is labor politics. And that is where I want to assert. So the very first trade union which was founded in India as a national center, the trade unions were founded from end of 19th century onward. So all those who had formed unions came to uh, Bombay. Conference was held. Great Lala Lajpatrai, who faced Lattis from uh, Simon Commission, uh, he was the first founding president. Now there I want to say, one thing was said very clearly. We will move ahead 
ट्रेड यूनियन फ्री ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ट्रेड यूनियन फ्री ऑफ मैनेजमेंट ट्रेड यूनियन फ्री ऑफ पोलिटिकल पार्टीज एंड लेट मी एम्फोसाइज ए आई टी यू सी कंटिन्यूज विद दैट प्रिंसिपल all those people who may be members or leaders at different levels can have their political opinions and work in any political party go and contest elections but aitc is free of political parties we will take our decisions as aitc that is the line which first indian trade union founded as a national center had given so there my friends i want to come to the uh, our strategies uh, and before coming to those strategies i want to say our collective uh, uh, wisdom today comes from beginning from royal commission to the struggles in india pre independence then to our first labor commission then we get the second labor commission also then the parliaments the legislations have worked movements agitations have worked it is all plethora of functioning and activity at the policy making at the implementation level and at the agitational level which has collectively given us the present day labor legislations which we had and that is being challenged it is not only a few trade unions named like recognition and you are uh, quarreling with them that you are bringing in labor codes and they are opposing our whole history is being challenged by these labor codes and that's why we have to fight back and that fighting back cannot be through words it has to be through movements and those movements to have larger participations this uh, forming of these labor rights included ilo contribution also it included international conventions international labor standards all that comes collectively and then we got these rights i want to assert here and that's why i said whatever we got from constitution even that is sub, is under attack that's why i say constitutional morality and constitutional values are also uh, under attack uh, and i also say article 19 of fundamental rights is under attack through these labor codes are we going to allow right to assembly all my friends explained that unionization will be weakened strikes will happen the recognition will be made because even if you make law you will not be able to stop the strikes people in distress will go ahead for strikes if you deny them job security if you deny them wages if you deny them minimum basic needs which they want to have and you force them for more working hours despite the law that you will not allow strike there will be strikes as we say wild cat strikes you see there were sect Uh, areas where strike notice is required there were areas where strike notices were not required but there were wild cat strikes happening and nobody will be able to stop those wild cat strikes i want to tell so it is not bringing peace in industrial zones or in the workplaces it is actually labor courts will be destroying the whole system of conciliation and adjudication will be destroying the peaceful ways of agitations of workers will be destroying the organized peaceful method of strikes being conducted in india so in a way that danger is there which workers have to realize if they have to be on the streets and that not only workers and employees other sections of the society who are benefited with the labor of work and the services of work so this is how i look at and that's why i would say that uh, all these uh, uh, labor laws are actually strike and lockouts were at par i am making additional points now strikes and lockouts were at par now total bias in favor of employers also i will say that this bias in favor of managements and illegality of strike 
which will begin with the strike notice itself will invite derecognition so collective bargaining is under attack and india is signatory to collective bargaining internationally and we have ratified uh, the ilo convention also and this public utility non public unity that division was there that division is finished that is the danger then reference is totally going away that's why from the notice conciliation begins and the strike is illegal so my friends the government is entering into a dangerous zone is creating conflicts will bring in restlessness into the industrial areas what is the path left with us we will go into agitation we will ask the workers not to follow more than 8 hours if you are not given overtime if you are not covered under occupational safety health you have to demand and fight for that we have to fight for social security coverage for all those who are left out who are all those who are being excluded we have right for picketing in india but this picketing right is also going away with edso and with these courts right to picketing how supreme court reacted to when some people went to supreme court that remove these farmers from here why they are picketing on roads supreme court said we cannot stop peaceful picketing this right was with us which is being taken away by these labor courts and by the rules rules are further damaging than the courts as shyam sundar ji said we are not to go into details i am not going i am saying only the uh, over thing so coverage will shrink uh, through these things uh, there in the wage code on minimum wage act or the payment of wages act will be made redundant it will be difficult thing to address whole vast majority of informal economy workers to get them wages and the government wants to make minimum wage and floor level wage as if it is one or the same thing minimum wage is minimum wage all those who are covered under schedule will get it all those who are not covered under schedule then you can talk in terms of floor level wage that below this nobody will give anybody but that doesn't mean that those minimum wage people who are covered will be removed from there and minimum wages that is why government wants to remove this minimum wages the present context so that the everybody could be brought down to rupees 178 per month, per day as a minister announced in the parliament that's why my friends i want to say there were 2000 2000 occupations were there in the scheduled employment government has done away with that schedule and now this wage question itself will be a difficult thing because notification of schedule used to happen discussion used to happen then the minimum wage is used to be announced to notify and then the things could go ahead then the trade unions could play their role now all that role will go away and that's why i think 15th indian labor conference is disrespected and now ilc not happening for last 6 years is another insult to indians it is insult to indians i say to our constitution you committed in the international fora and you failed to implement it you take the oath of constitution and sit in the seat of power and then you disrespect what comes out of indian labor conference and what constitution demands us to do and that's why uh, i think government is far away from the slogan of ilo of giving decent wage our constitution talked of living wage but we did not have that then the fair wage commission was set up but that recommendations were never implemented in india we are left with minimum wage and this government wants to do away with that minimum wage concept also Amrit. and it's uh, defining also i would like to come to closing i know the times are uh, is happening and that's why uh, i would say that uh, uh, this uh, wage issue also is quite serious with us we have talked other times also now social security code also is exclusive some friends have uh, talked about it it used to have nine points by ilo for every country as a standard measure and india was fulfilling those nine points 
in social security even though that social security coverage is only 5 to 6% population of the workforce not others so the idea was to bring everybody in this side instead of that those who are covered they are being endangered their social security will get snatched away and weakened and then if you talk about uh, uh, <clears throat> all these uh, i leave the occupational safety help uh, during this period we saw so many accidents happening during the opening up occupational safety health issue is life and death question for workers but osh has removed inter uh, inter uh, interstate migrant act has been abolished interstate migrant act had 26 clauses and this government has taken out six clauses out of that and put in this code let me tell you and they have no meaning are they serious about those migrant workers who suffered crores of them and are today also suffering many of them did not get jobs or not able to come back and women have suffered worst in that because their drop out of jobs is much more than men and their joining back is less much less than the men this Amrit, all has happened so Amrit, uh, lastly yes lastly i come to the questions which you raised there uh, one is that do we we don't accept these labor courts these are insult to indian labor and to indian constitution and to international commitments which india has made so where to go that means the rules should not be accepted number 3 state governments state governments we are appealing as trade unions we are telling them don't go with the rules and that is where wherever discussions are happening this is true all my friends told that we are submitting our amendments because we don't go out of the discourse we are asking for social dialogue we are asking for ilc we want dialogues that is why whatever government is putting on web page we are definitely replying that and telling them and again repeating we don't accept these labor courts so we are into that process not because we have accepted that labor courts we don't accept it this we repeat every time we say conduct discussions on each labor court so that is uh, uh, another thing then uh, rules uh, what uh, comments we will make i have already told you rules are much more damaging even than the courts if you ask me what dialogues are happening both at central and state level at central level dialogue is missing it is totally missing calling through webinar for few minutes and saying we are consulting you will have no meaning these codes are huge 400 pages 300 pages 250 pages 700 pages it's a mockery which they are saying we will be consulting but no nothing is happening in the states also the things are not good no consultations properly a few states did call them uh, for this rule framing and they asked us and we told our state chapters uh, what we have submitted we send it to you but in your state specifically you can add and put it there so there also trade unions are making submissions but trade unions are saying we don't accept these labor courts so okay. do not implement these okay, we are rules. going out of the i mean it's yeah. 8:30 please yeah so uh, you uh, so the state levels also we are agitating and the central level also we are agitating and uh, we have announced 9th august to be observed recently we conducted several campaigns now we are busy with as i told you we have to carry the things to our workers to their families and the masses so our extensive campaign all over india has begun to explain about codes and rules to explain about attack on farmers and then against uh, privatization of public sector all those issues we are taking up asking for uh, migrant act also asking for policy for them asking for 7500 cash to the families asking for universal coverage for public distribution system several of the demands are there we are campaigning 9th august will be observed as save india day on all these questions uh, asking for repeal of these laws and saving our public sector and uh, attacking uh, these attacks uh, through eds so uh, we are opposing that also so we will be on war path i want to tell you it's not only 9th august campaign we are visualizing in future 
we will definitely try to have a multi days strike sector wise one day two day strikes may happen but we will go ahead for our national general strike we have been going on for one day two days but this time when we go on indefinite strike uh, or a multi days strike that time will tell but we will begin with multi day strike and then we will see how the situations uh, grow in the country as far as mobilization is concerned and i want to tell you various sectors sectoral strikes are going to happen that is uh, on the path insurance sector has already announced i think tomorrow they are going on strike and uh, similarly defense is still planning despite edso they are still planning banks were planning and now finance minister says that those two banks which they were to privatize they have been postponed to defer to 2021 so maybe immediate strike may not happen they will go for campaign mode so campaign agitation and then for multi day strike that will be modus operandi we will go ahead sectorally sometimes we are coming together as vrijesh ji said in defense we were together in coal we were together we will be very happy if uh, bms is part of that joint platform of central trade unions once again uh, i would uh, definitely say but uh, not only for welfare myers but for labor politics and labor politics is not political party politics it is a working class who no produces politics. wealth no wants politics. its share no okay politics. thank you thank you comrade no thank, thank you thank you thank you sir uh, i you know uh, it has been a pleasure listening to comrade amarjit kaur she she made uh, <clears throat> a very uh, very uh, you know agonized lively infused and absolutely stand out performance in terms of uh, articulating the trade union perspective the strategy but i just want to highlight two points before i request the discussants to come in she made a very fundamental observation the entire architecture of labor rights even the labor movement the labor history is being challenged by the labor courts this is the most powerful observation i have ever come across and of course i thank her for uh, confessing that the trade union movement need to scale up its agitations and she also made a point that labor politics and labor welfare cannot be disentangled they stand together i leave it to the sensitivity and the intelligence of the listeners about the uh, about about the kind of uh, differences of opinion that could be there now uh, i just want to ask uh, the discussants uh, uh, of course she had mapped out the strategy saying that there'll be sectoral strikes there'll be multi day strikes not one day two days and there'll be indefinite strike so the so we get a sense on the one hand the trade union movement is knocking at the doors of the government for social dialogue and a relook at the parliament a re revisiting of the entire labor courts or there could be some kind of uh, agitations there could be mass agitations and of course he had also made a point that there is an alliance between the peasants and the industrial working class the point is well taken the point that i want the discussants to ask particularly i want uh, professor uh, uh, rashmi venkatesh to say is there any chance that the parliament uh, constitutionally can have a relook at the once passed labor courts if the trade union movement makes a mass movement uh, uh, making a demand on the part of the government and to mr prashant uh, prashantananda what is the pulse of the uh, society uh, you are interacting with uh, Uh, most stakeholders so with these comments and observations i will leave my role as a moderator uh, temporarily and uh, i will request to professor rashmi venkatesh to come on board to share her views and perspectives thank you very much it has been a pleasure listening to the stalwarts of the trade union movement over to you professor rashmi uh thank you professor samson sir um Okay, that's a quick question. So I don't know how much I'll be able to really give you an in-depth response. Um, but it was really pleasure listening to all the luminaries of the trade union movement for the last almost two hours. And I think there is it's um, 
it's fair to say that there is consensus that the labor code is problematic, which would be uh, resisted by the workers of all the trade unions. And I think most of the academics and labor activists are on board with that as well. Um, when I first read about, I mean, in two things, two quick things in the beginning. One, I'm not a labor law professor. Uh, I teach human rights and I teach uh, law and development. And which is why I think it's very interesting that labor law sits exactly in the intersection of these two things. Uh, and that's why it's relevant for me. That's how I got into this idea, you know, got into the development discourse because I came from a bit of a labor background uh, in my earlier working life. Um, and it's interesting that that perspective, that labor law and labor rights and labor justice sits exactly at where law, social justice, constitutional morality, development sit, is somewhere seems to be missing out on in the public perception. So probably I would, I would um, weave into it the answer to your question, Professor Shamsundar, it also the broader point that I wanted to make, listening to everybody in this panel, and also when I was reflecting on, uh, you know, what I would be thinking about when I first heard of the webinar. Um, and it, it was quite interesting that when we think about labor law, and this is something that, uh, Professor, you have written about, and I've also sort of briefly uh, done so, is that we think about it in either the question of as a labor issue or as a legal issue. And it, the major writings around this have come uh, from that position of you know, looking at labor code as either a labor issue or, or as a legal issue. Now, of course, it is both. It is a labor issue and it is a legal issue as well. But it is not just a labor issue and it is not just a legal issue. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think most panelists here would definitely agree upon. And when we talk, and the reason is that because when we talk about labor issue, it's, and, and, and I speak as somebody who addresses a very young audience on a regular basis, I'm sure as you would too, labor is considered to be a very specific interest group that you can pick and choose about who comes under this term labor and the, comes under this term working class and that labor laws are only meant for those people or only meant for a certain community or only meant for a certain section. We don't think about labor in its larger context and its larger, longer political history as uh, Madam Aujit Kaur was talking about, or in its particular relevance today as being the vanguard of social and economic justice. So thinking about labor codes and how do we pitch labor codes, both as an issue of constitutional morality and constitutional imagination perhaps, but also as a, as a vision of constructing a fair society, we don't think about labor as a, you know, as a top of the list sort of a thing uh, uh, that we need to work on. So when, we, when the public perception around labor, uh, labor codes, in my view, has been one of the probably where a lot of the conversation and a lot of the introspection also needs to be done. I obviously don't speak as a labor unionist because I'm not and I don't represent any uh, trade union. I'm not a part of, you know, obviously not building a strategy. But as one, as a, as a citizen who is you know, engaged with labor issues and also as an academic who's interested in labor issues as being a part of a larger developmental and economic reforms issue. And in that context, that intersectionality or that placing of labor codes is somewhere I think missing. And I think my, my next dis discussant can also discuss that in a little bit more depth when you ask how does the larger society view it. Uh, I'm interested in that perception, what Father uh, Fernandez left us with in the beginning, saying it is a polarized perspective. And I, the, the intervention or the, the place where I think more of the conversation needs to be done is on how do we build that perspective and how do we build that narrative and a public narrative around it? Because there is a fair amount of writing, there is a fair amount of consensus, there is a whole lot of critique on what is wrong with the labor codes. There is, you have written that on that extensively, other labor scholars have written on that extensively. And this conversation has been going on for so long. Almost, it goes back to decades when labor, labor scholars have been critiquing what is, you know, what is the structure of labor laws in general, why the 1991 reforms have been chipping away at labor laws steadily, a little bit, little bit in each state, you know, from here and from there, without necessarily making it look like a full-blown assault on labor per se. 
So these things have been written about for a long time. And, you know, the labor code is not going to be, it's not the end of the conversation. It's a part of the journey. There are going to be even more relaxations on labor protections. Uh, you, whatever rules we make now are probably going to get even more relaxed in favor of business. So this is going to, this is just one big milestone in that long journey of, uh, you know, deregulating, I mean, in quotes, deregulating labor in favor of, uh, you know, having more control of businesses. So it's the, so the, I mean, what I'm trying to, the point that I'm trying to make is that the intellectual work behind the critique of labor law is not missing. It is alive, it is thriving, it is out there for everyone to see. The translation of that from a understanding within the specific domains of either labor and law to a larger public discourse, I think has, there has been a bit of a disconnect. And what what makes me say that is because if we look at something that happened like the farmers uh, resistance the farm laws that came about it happened on the heels of the labor code in fact the labor code have have has, has, has had a much longer history of critique than the farm laws but the farm laws was able to generate a kind of public discourse that i thought the labor codes were not in a position to uh, uh, to do and that's probably also goes back to our ideas of introspection. You know, how, how, why is this translation of a labor code uh, or resisting a labor code or articulating what is a critique of the labor code is also a critique of, of economic morality, of economic and political justice, of where development, what we mean of that is going today. And that it, labor is not something that is restricted to a few people. Just like the farmers' agitation was, it really captured the public imagination. It was people, public intellectuals were speaking about it, students were talking about it. It was all over the social media. So it became a, the translation from labor to public, like the way the farmers to public happened. I think that is something that we really need to think about more carefully about why is that missing? Why is it that a labor issue is considered to be, or a labor law issue is considered to be just? a labor issue, meaning that a, you know, only trade unions can speak about it, it concerns only people who are a part of the trade union, and it does not become a question of a public morality, it doesn't become a question, it's not a considered to be a public issue. And there is a lot to be said about that, because if we really think about what labor laws do, and I've, you know, uh, is that they really sit at the center of economic justice. What we are really talking about here when we talk about the dismantling of labor codes, and as uh, my other panelists were talking about, that this is an assault on what the constitutional imagination is. This is an assault on what, this is a negation of what the labor history has been for so long of securing rights, little bit, little bit, little bit over a period of time through struggle and mobilization. and mobilization. That what we're really talking about is a larger economic system that is now headed towards concentrating economic and social power to a very, very few people, which is going to be the employers and the state in nexus with each other. And the large majority of us is going to be left out. So the dismantling of labor laws and labor protection is not an issue of just either law or labor, that it is a public issue and that it has to be articulated as such. We need to find uh, we need to find intellectuals, we need to find writings, we need to be in the public forum as not something that, you know, that you need to support us because we, in, in quotes, are a very specific entity, but that this concerns a much larger issue of developmental morality of economic justice. That I think is that discourse and that narrative somewhere, I, uh, as, uh, at least from my readings, has not been very clear. It has largely been restricted to a critique of the laws uh, of what was earlier, what will become now, and why that is dangerous. But the danger is far more amplified than just being restricted to people who are, you know, workers who are a part of the trade union or workers in general. So I think that uh, that uh, that translation from labor to public, uh, and from a labor law perspective to a public discourse perspective, um, needs to be done much more carefully. Uh, along with that, I think. Uh, something that everyone else raised, which was on the strategies and introspecting on the strategies of the trade union. I wonder if there is a way to make it more young, uh, you know, in the sense of on getting on the digital platforms, getting on different media. So this is where we're all getting our information from. And I'm sure this is something that um, trade unions have been exploring, but we really need to 
we need to message in a way that the message is being heard and listened to and engaged with by a lot of uh, a lot of uh, young people and a lot of you know uh, people who don't consider themselves necessarily as natural allies of the of labor or don't consider them as uh, you know as as part of a uh, part of their public uh, politics so there is i think how does that happen um, is again is is something that is as um, as a reader or a consumer of news um, is something that I think is relevant because you see some things that get captured very easily under the public imagination and some don't. And I think labor tends to lag behind uh, as not being uh, as not being an issue that concerns everyone or that is it doesn't stream on your social media page, for instance, almost ever. And that's that's what creates news, right? You, you, there are no Twitter storms on labor codes. There are no uh, my Facebook hardly talks about it. when the farm protest was happening. You could not see your Facebook page without at least somebody posting a meme around it. But it's so easy for labor codes to just slip under the radar, which is extremely problematic. And you know it has implications, obviously. That uh, uh, yeah, I won't take too much time. In terms of the law, uh, well, you know. They say law is an ass that bites you if it's in front of you and kicks you if you're behind it. And that's also true for uh, for labor because I think uh, the legal history of the labor laws has also been very problematic. The so-called industrial peace is really a compromise between how to get industrial production going along with also keeping labor happy. The question of the constitution, I think, is a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, I just as an ad hoc, I mean, you know, uh, over the top of my head. I'm not really sure how much uh, a constitutional challenge will uh, will do, because we've also seen how the judiciary has moved in its constitutional interpretation over the last 30 so years. Uh, and if we really think about the idea that a lot of national security laws are still co considered to be constitutional, the labor courts will most likely I mean, my reading is that they're not going to be struck down as unconstitutional. That seems extremely, extremely unlikely. Uh, because as I said, there have been so many other labor laws and labor codes, and this is going to, going to be considered parliamentary prerogative. There is nothing overly on top of it that is, you know, con and cons constitutional morality is an evolving concept. It does not really, uh, you know, I mean, it, you can't say this is against constitutional morality and get it thrown out as con unconstitutional. So I'm not really sure how that's going to go. However, linking back to what I was saying earlier, a public discourse around it also does have an impact on how the judicial response for this is going to be and how the parliamentary response is going to be. The kind of steps that can be taken with the impunity that it gets taken with perhaps can be resisted or reined in a bit with if you have a much robust uh, public discourse around what labor codes are, uh, you know, are set to do or are going to end up doing in the next few, I don't know, few years, few months, few months, but to turn out. Um, so that's, that's, that was my big point. How, to, how, how do we translate this entire knowledge and critique that we have into a course that talks about labor in the context of a public generation of discourse? Second, I think uh, there's been a lot of conversation around trade union rights, but we need to have a lot more on uh, uh, occupational health and safety and social security um, laws that that is that's something also that i think is, needs particular um, uh, attention by uh, by trade unions to to look at i i before before professor tells me that my time is over i think that's that's where i'll uh, that's where i'll stop but thank you very much thank you very much uh, uh, professor um, rashmi venkateshan the point that you made is uh, how do we build up a public narrative around the labor codes? Or how do we wed or strike a fruitful, productive marriage between the public narrative and the labor movement? Given that this is only the one, one signpost of dilution of labor rights, there may be more that, that would be coming in the days to come, like the uh, essential services defense uh, bill ordinance and bill, etc. So you made a very important point that the farmer's agitation achieved a sense of public and political legitimacy. On the other hand, we have uh, an entrenched historic labor laws and labor legal framework, and we have a tripartite framework, and we have international labor organization. We have such a huge architecture, yet trade unions have not been able to, what you said, as create a connect between labor and public. 
that kind of articulation is missing so that the the labor force has not caught on the to the public imagination and of course you said that trade union should learn to grow young this is something that the trade union leaders must ponder about which many of my students do ask why do why do i mean uh, with due respect and apology to all the veterans why do they stay on linger on this is something the trade union movement needs to ponder on we are outsiders and they are insiders they need to talk about it and uh, now i will request uh, prashant ananda who has been listening uh, uh, you know patiently and of course he's a journalist he's uh, used to listen uh, i mean waiting and listening to people sir over to you uh, good evening uh, should i say good night uh, <laughs> i don't know uh, see uh, before i start uh, uh, i must say if we are not focused we will lose the track and the proof in of this is from 48 participants we are down to 32 in 30 minutes that clearly shows that we are slowly not perhaps focusing as much as we should focus on the issue okay second point is as a discussant i'm a journalist i'll come to that further that public perception point that professor sam sundar asked uh, as a discussant generally i believe that uh, in an academic discussion or in a, in, a, in a good discussion you get the papers well in well in advance you read them then you take the, the discussion forward but in a discussion like this it is everything is impromptu uh, so i'm just taking three four points of what the speaker said as a microcosm of the public perception uh, uh now we have lost one more uh, so i'll just be short in five minutes uh, dr uh, fernandez touched upon the bipolar views the complete contrast of east and west between what the industry and the government thinks and what the trade unions thinks what he didn't say is what the public and the, the working class think so here is the disconnect between the trade union the public view and the and, and the labor market in, in 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 total so labor market has to be part of this trade union thought process we cannot look at trade unions as a group of people who only complain we have to look at them as catalyst and they have to improve perhaps there i don't know that so many veterans here they they have seen much more life than me but i think this is one suggestion the second point uh, i think chandra prakash ji said very interesting point and that also uh, talks about the the frustration of the trade unions that sarkar to hamari baat sunegi nahi hame pata hai nahi sunegi yahi yahi perception hai public mein bhi ki trade union ki baat sarkar nahi sunegi whether it is labor courts or anything else but kyu nahi sunegi whether it is a congress government whether it is a non congress government or whether it is a bjp government or nda government because what brijesh ji pointed out it lacks an intellectual backbone we speak more out of emotions and lack the hep the data to speak about what we are speaking for example uh, why can't the trade unions during the negotiation with the government and labor courts suggest what should be the percentage of fund that the government must collect from the gig and platform companies for their social welfare it is the government was decided 2% and 2% has as a two different uh, 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 connotations whether it is 2% of revenue or 2% of the, the salary paid so it's, it's still not sure about that uh, most probably it is 2% of the salary paid that the, the ministry has come down to so why we can't come to this point to suggest concrete points so this is where we are missing uh, amitabh guha sahab said uh, hum celebrity nahi hum to audio mein baat kar sakte hain and here professor venkateshan said perhaps answer that question in a different way let me put it together because you are missing from public perception and public view if you are not ready to be seen how can somebody will talk about you don't take me I, I, i'm only 42 year old i am most of you are are i'm 17 years in this profession first why don't you want to be seen why don't you want to be be, be taken seriously okay so so let, let so so what is the said the prof and now the professor asked me the what should what is the public perception let me ask i think i, I jot down few points uh, uh, this labor code is being discussed from 2014 uh, the rajasthan government took the lead first then other states followed 
uh, the, the 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 top bureaucrats wrote to states saying follow the follow the Rajasthan model and slowly the labor courts evolve in the national level. I just want to understand why they didn't convince if the government if, if the industry can convince that the government that this is not good for industry. Why we fail to convince the government that this is bad for the people? It is because what Bridges ji said there is there is a still a disconnect between labor welfare and labor politics. This is where we need to walk on very very seriously whether we accept it or not. And if Bridges ji said uh, strength of resistance, we all accept it. I think Professor Samshner has already said that everybody accepts what the trade unions do for the working class especially a small portion of working class. Let me re rephrase that. But boss, you are fading. Let's accept it. You are fading in public perception. We are not growing young. We are still, so, so let, these are shortcomings. We have to, if I don't have a job, then I will search for a job. I will not sit down at my home and, and, and cry. So where is the job search? Where is the introspection? Where we are going? This is one point. Second point is, See, we are in 2020. What is why the trade union movement grew and on, on which footing it grew? Let's accept two things. It grew on the strength of PSUs and PSU staff. What does the PSUs, government companies, state-run companies staff has that we do not have right now? It is a job security, a decent job. We do not have a decent job. Our basic salary is 6,000 rupees, 8,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees, 15,000 rupees. Look at the payroll data, PPFO. Majority, two third of them are, are, are earning less than 15,000 rupees. We are representing that class. So how can we expect unless we evolve that our trade union movement will sustain, sustain for next 20 years, 30 years. I, I think I, I wrote a story, I spoke to Amarjit ma'am. And they turn 100. At 101, we are struggling. We are not experienced. So we have not changed. We have become static. So this is where we, we need to go. When I say we, it is the trade unions. I'm always a third party. Have this go between the, the government and the public. Uh, especially, I'm, I'm a public perception person. I'm a person who writes about the people's view. And the most important point is let me give you a few data points, two, three data points before. Uh, uh, I, I end my conversation and, and, and give my last payroll data. We are all talking about some of the, the these panelists here are part of the, the, the EPFO system. If you look at the payroll system, 55 to 60% of the jobs being created every month are coming from expert services. I spoke with Professor Shamsundar the other day. Who are these expert services? There's, they're that staffing companies, petty contractors, and, and the security guards. Are we, and then with this kind of people, what the trade unions are doing? And second, are they looking at a much bigger, larger picture? And okay, this is one part. Look at the CMI data. CMI data of July end, we are in, in August 3rd. Uh, I'm talking about a data which is two, day, two days old. We have a 400 million labor market and we have only 76 million salaried people. So the trade unions are at max talking about 76 million people and they are not talking about the larger informal sector and 2019 paper of ILO very clearly says the survival and the growth of trade union will depend on how they represent the informal sectors. And we cannot deny that fact that without representing the informal sector and more so in 2021, when fixed term employment is now illegal, across sectors and gig work is taking away the permanent and regular works. So are we representing gig workers? Are we representing fixed term workers? Or are we only talking from some industrial beds? As such, we do not have a presence in the IT, ITA sector. The ed tech sector is growing faster. E-commerce sector is growing faster. Are we even present there? How will we represent them? So, so th these are the areas that perhaps we are missing very, very clearly and getting very emotional on certain things. For me to tell you that listen to me will depend on what I am saying. And if the audience is not my friend and it is a public, it is a very heterogeneous group, then I need to be very focused to the point 
and tell them boss what i am telling you makes sense for your well being and before i end everybody is talking about the farmers movement and the trade union movement why it is not as effective i think uh, dr rashmi venkateshan touched upon that but this, this is a very socio economic issue i think uh, farmers were protesting are rich laborers were protesting are poor they cannot protest for 10 day at a strength because that will impact their family livelihood in contrast the farmers were protesting are fairly rich they are replenishing each other going back and coming coming back so we have to accept that it's a reality that our labor class is poor as trade unions are we helping them get a job are we helping them negotiate the salary the labor courts has actually made life difficult for trade unions in terms of uh, going to a negotiation table in terms of uh, holding protest in terms of whether the outside labor union leaders have a role in the inside negotiation table and second let me also warn you a very interesting point in a negotiating table if a trade union has only 51% a uh, strength staff strength then it will be the sole uh, negotiating person and let me tell you one this these courts are implemented you will see your friend friendly uh, trade union will poach into your own trade union people just to be the sole negotiating agent because it helps them the labor politics comes in then we have seen in enough examples including the maruti so my point is and and and, and we all this, this is not prashant nandas view this is the view of the public this is how we look at them we look at them and what the what the trade unions especially across board across color should do is they must move of course the resistance fact is very important but from banner and shouting they need to become intellectuals young appealing and forceful in their view as solution providers not just problem because industries and government always tell that trade unions are militant trade unions we don't want to hear that thank you so much for your time sir thank you thank you uh, thank you president and for making very powerful uh, points uh, i'll just summarize before the number uh, gets from 19 to 18 to 15 um, number one is that you you say, i mean as a person who who I mean who knows who interacts with the society you say that there is a there is a growing disconnect between trade unions and the public so the point that uh, dr prosa rashmi invitation said and you said uh, in a sense gel she said there is a need to build a public narrative and you said that there is a disconnect between public and trade unions both of you have sounded cautionary notes and if i can expand what uh, prosa rashmi invitation said and uh, weld into what you said trade unions should not only grow young but they should evolve and they should change and they should become representative you have given two interesting points on the one hand there is a traditional informal sector which is unrepresented by the trade unions or underrepresented by the trade unions on the other hand from the payroll data you said that a new labor market is emerging so that's a, these are very interesting insights so The, the the larger point that is coming across is that the discussants are saying that the trade unions need to introspect need to change need to refocus need to retool as they themselves have recognized and uh, several panelists have spoken and they need to build a public narrative to reach out to the larger masses and be representative in a sense i think there could not have been a wonderful panel discussion as such as this comrade amita goga and mr chandraprakash singh provided a wonderful critique and uh, mr vrijay supadhyaya and the comrade amarjit kaur built on though in a diverse sense their own perceptions their own perspectives on the path ahead i think and the discussants have added meat and said that look you need to stay relevant you need to stay young and you you need to build your legitimacy i think this these are this is a one of the wonderful panel discussions i have ever been involved as a moderator of course uh, uh, to uh, to have time um, uh, ma- uh, time management and trade union leaders it is very difficult and uh, i mean we need to concede that but i think the panel discussion has come out with wonderful uh, ideas and uh, i do not know whether we have time to have another round of discussion i mean uh, to way forward 
but i just make one last comment and i would stop and uh, give the floor to father denzel fernandez that there is no doubt that the trade union movement has earned its legitimacy within the working class and and to the academics but it it needs to perhaps reinvent itself in the era of globalization with the digitalization modernization and various other challenges that are approaching but i'm sure i want to end on a optimist a note of optimism that trade unions have seen the end of uh, colonial imperialism they will see the end of uh, this kind of uh, modern imperialism i'm sure only the question is how and and it is for them to introspect thank you very much uh, all four panelists and the two discussions for an extremely interesting and very engaging uh, you know time and uh, ideas i thank dr arjun kumar for this and i hand over the proceedings to father denzel fernandez thank you once again to all of you thank you very much uh, professor sham sundar and uh, all the panelists especially the, uh, the trade union leaders for presenting the trade union uh, perspective and the discussions for such uh, valuable comments uh, and uh, it's already very late so i don't want to say much but just a, a couple of uh, points uh, i would like to make the first thing is that uh, that there is there is unanimity that there is there are serious problems with the labor codes and uh, all all codes there's of course calls to repeal it and so on and so forth um but coming to the other aspect of how the uh, labor unions should respond to this uh, a lot of the labor unions have been uh, organi organizing strikes and mass movement joined uh, uh, joined with uh, the farmers uh, agitation and so on and so forth but definitely there's a concern of making uh, the issue of labor codes a public issue and um, and trying to transcend from uh, old methods to some new more modern methods using uh, you know the the digital platforms using various social media trying to capture the youth uh trying to make it more appealing and finally what is more important is is making making the labor codes and the say the the farmer laws um uh, politically costly for those who have you know um implemented this so this is how it can translate itself how these uh, this these movements against the the labor codes can capture the minds of people capture the uh, minds of youth and translate itself when it comes to electoral politics i think uh, this is crucial um, for the future of uh, the you know the labor codes so with this i would like to uh, conclude and uh, uh, thank you very much um I, i hand over to arjun kumar for the thank rest thank you thank you thank sir you. many question have come but it has been answered also many comments have also come here and on facebook but uh, sir if you allow we can go to each of our each of our panelists for just one minute in the intervention as conclusion and way forward everyone has been patient so many of issues has already risen so shall we start with Am amitava sir so uh, one minute just your concluding remarks and way forward yes please go ahead go ahead amita was sir uh, concluding not simply this that to workers are here inching toward the very moment as some number has said was a increase also audio audio is the comrade you are not audible hello uh, sir some connection related connectivity issue, issue connectivity problem yes okay or uh, rajun we can uh, 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 come to him later we can you can proceed yes. to the next panelist please chandrakash sir over to you 
देखिए काफी बात हो गई है अब अगर हम ये देखें तो किसान मूवमेंट के साथ लेबर मूवमेंट को जोड़ करके नहीं देखा जा सकता है लेबर मूवमेंट का एक अलग कंसेप्ट है और अगर आप देखेंगे तो किसानों की लड़ाई केवल डायरेक्ट उनका उनके उनके सरकार के साथ है हमारी लड़ाई केवल सरकार के साथ नहीं होता सेक्ट्रल लेवल पर जब हम लड़ते हैं तो हमारे विरुद्ध एक बड़ा मैनेजमेंट एक बड़ा बड़ा ग्रुप भी खड़ा रहता है तो ये जो लेबर मूवमेंट को हाँ ये बात जरूर है पब्लिक सपोर्ट कोई आज की बात नहीं है अगर आप देखेंगे तो लेबर मूवमेंट को इस देश में आजादी के बाद लेबर मूवमेंट को पब्लिक सपोर्ट मिला ही नहीं और हम लोग शुरू से अभी तो मान लो अनऑर्गेनाइज ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर की बात कर रहे हैं लेकिन काफी वर्षों तक लगातार ट्रेड यूनियन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर करते रहा है करते रहा इसका हमने प्रारंभ में अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर को इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर असंगठित क्षेत्र को ट्रेड यूनियन ने आजादी के बाद अपने हाथ में इस लड़ाई को कभी लिया नहीं यही कारण है कि आप देखेंगे कि एग्रीकल्चर लेबर के मूवमेंट को नक्सल मूवमेंट करार दे दिया गया इस देश में इसलिए ये एक बात है कहीं ना कहीं हमारी गलती हुई है हम में कमी है उसके बारे में हमको सोचने का जरूरत है और आज कई बातें जो भर के आई है कि पब्लिक सपोर्ट हमें कैसे होगा लेकिन उससे भी ज्यादा जरूरी है कि इस देश में देखिए मल्टीपल जो यूनियन का जो है हमारे एक फ्रेंड ने प्रसाद जी ने कहा कि हमारी लड़ाई तो बहुत जगह ग्राउंड लेवल पर आपस में भी हम लड़ते रहते हैं तो ये ग्राउंड लेवल पर आपस में भी लड़ते रहते हैं ऊपर में भी अभी हम जितना भी बात यहाँ कर लें लेकिन वो लड़ाई हमारी अभी भी ऊपर में भी है और नीचे में भी है तो कहीं ना कहीं हम में कमजोरी है और उस कमजोरी का फायदा या तो बड़े मैनेजमेंट या फिर गवर्नमेंट उठा रही है तो आज का ये डिस्कशन है हमको लगता है कि हम लोगों को कुछ ना कुछ इससे अगर सबक मिलता है तो हम सीखने का काम जरूर करेंगे और आगे काफी बात हो चुकी है हम ज्यादा चर्चा नहीं करना चाहते हैं लेकिन लेबर मूवमेंट इस देश से कभी जाने वाला नहीं है मरने वाला नहीं है कोई नई नए फॉर्म में ये ये लेबर मूवमेंट आएगा ऐसा नहीं है कि जिग वर्कर और जो प्लेटफॉर्म वर्कर या और जो इनफॉर्मल वर्कर एग्रीकल्चर वर्कर इनकी लड़ाई आज खत्म हो जाएगी ऐसा नहीं है ये लेबर कोड को आने दीजिए ना ये लेबर कोड के आने के बाद यदि सरकार किसी भी तरह से इस लेबर कोड को इम्प्लीमेंट कर ही देती है तो आप देखेंगे इस देश में एक नई लड़ाई फिर खड़ी होगी और ट्रेड यूनियन मूवमेंट का जो जो ग्रास रूट अगर आप मानते हैं कि अभी कमजोर है तो ये लेबर कोड हमको मजबूत करेगा और इस लेबर कोड के चलते हमारी एकजुटता भी बढ़ेगी हम यही कहना चाहते हैं थैंक यू धन्यवाद सर नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू ब्रिजेश सर आपके कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स और थॉट्स थैंक यू अर्जुन जी आई थिंक टूडेज डिस्कशन इज ऑल दो वी हैव नॉट डिस्कस्ड इन द टर्म ऑफ वे फॉरवर्ड बट आई थिंक वे फॉरवर्ड वी हैव आइडेंटिफाइड डेवलपिंग कनेक्ट विद इन आवर्स एंड विद इन ट्रेड यूनियन it's one aspect we have identified and our both the uh, nanda ji and uh, venkateshan ji they have uh, brought us to the point to recognize yourself and recognize the audience if you will not listen yourself nobody will listen you and the very next one is we have to change with the changes we are not changing ourselves we can't bring the change or we can't force others to get change design of 60s economy and the trade union thought philosophy based on the 60s economy will not work now world is discussing 2030 agenda so we have to come to the a point to the label to the close uh, closer to the issues if we could change ourselves to this extent we can change the universe this might be a the very difficult task is changing our perception our mindset our approach that is the big issue we need to address thank you very much thank you thank you very much sir and now we are also aspiring for india 2047 new india 100 year <laughs> yes really? so really? really? thank you thank you sir coming thank you Yes, sir. Now uh, coming to Amarjit, ma'am, and we'll come back to Amitava, sir. He's also raising hand. Amarjit, ma'am, over to you. 
yes uh, thank you for giving this opportunity for last comments uh, i respect uh, the presentation by dr rashmi and uh, prashant uh, they have their uh, suggestions which are well taken how trade unions should use digital platforms social media and all uh, create public perception the way other sections are fighting who are making the public perception etc all those points were raised i don't agree that there is intellectual vacuum with the trade unions i don't agree there uh, i we have enough resources all trade unions uh, in whichever center they are Uh, they have this thing you can say that uh, with that intellectual uh, uh, availability whatever we have those intellectual resources are we able to put them in proper use for developing our movements and all there i can say so there is no dearth of intellectual sector wise we see how matured even a, a, even our unskilled worker is much more mature than even the top class leader of a particular trade unions so uh, there is no dearth of this thing because that is question of their life and they very in clear language they explain what they are feeling about the difficulty of the trade union movement is it's not so simple to have these movements even one day a strike means they lose their jobs many of them and they lose their kitchens nothing will be cooked they won't be having earning and all i'm talking of informal economy worker and formal workers also have to lose their wages when they go for strike so uh, i won't say there is intellectual vacuum i will definitely say you one needs to know more one needs to address the new workers which are coming because uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, changes in the development process happens and new kinds of workers uh, keep coming and we are supposed to work on them also it's also not true that we don't try to work among them but it's not so easy to mobilize them to say that the people uh, do not know about this workforce you look at the number at present we are 540 million 54 crore workers out of that if you remove the government sector public sector and little bit formal sector workers and if you take only the rest of the workers they are 45 crore plus who are out of this and when we say 45 crore plus many of them are married and their family members attached so you are talking about 100 crore people in india if their visibility is not there it's failure of uh, at the system also that their visibility is not there not only the failure of uh, trade unions they don't get focus even in media they don't get focus but first time nakedly it was exposed how our workers suffer during this lockdown period the people were really surprised how crores of workers out of their homes are working within the states or outside the state so uh, it got exposed uh, people were emotional but then it goes out of the public psyche once again but i i don't deny that we have to build public spaces we have to build the arguments there we have to have spaces over there i definitely agree those points which have been uh, made and uh, uh, i know that uh, uh, you talk of uh, young leadership to be brought well taken uh, i also should mention that uh, uh, our membership is Uh, almost 60 70 80 percent membership is in informal economy workers let me make it clear to you whatever total membership we have and annual returns we make and those uh, i i tell you uh, our membership is all 76 between 70 to 80 percent is informal economy workers a formal economy workers is only 20 percent and in some cases even only 10 percent and not that formal economy worker also most of them are becoming outsourced workers contract workers daily workers and uh, shrinking regular jobs are happening so there is no way out uh, that the trade unions have to uh, address the contract worker casual worker daily worker informal worker we have to address it otherwise there is no existence of trade unions uh, one can ensure so that is what point to say and when we fought in 20s 
1920s and we were fighting before that 1920s there was no psus psus came after 1960 only so where were we working we were working among all these workers only who had no rights during british era and we fought with the britishers to get our unions to be legalized in 1926 so if we will be thrown back there with these labor codes and rules so we know fighting is the only way out so we have from slavery situations we have come to this level and if again slavery will be imposed on us the workers will fight leaders are there or not workers will fight and let me inform prashant and rashmi uh, all our workers at the grassroots level in small industries in middle industries all young workers their leaders are also young because they have to choose from among those workers only all new industries coming up all those polytechnic trains iti trains uh, trained workers from uh, uh, iits also all those youngsters are joining those all modern technology industries it is youngster workers and then they when they form their unions their leaders are also young and that's why i say intellectual dearth is not there all those people who are working at that level they give the feedback to others in unions it happens that it takes you 30 years 40 years 50 years and then only you are considered to be capable being in the national headquarter but there also i do agree part of the national headquarters also you should have many of the youngsters around you there i agree with your point but it's not true that young leaders are not there all the down below you go to industrial area it is all young leaders all new industries which have come up in last 20 years or 15 years or 25 years uh, the people who got recruited and all many of them even dropped Uh, because uh, they could not join back even during lockdown period and post lockdown also so uh, i want to uh, end up here by telling that uh, we do accept uh, uh, the critical view point uh, we do try to learn from those critical points but we do assert that uh, labor history has its very very deep roots and it is evolved and this evolution will continue and if we will get weakened up we will be in problem so we have been insisting one industry one union if that we achieve in future then the managements or the governments the fight will be real advantage working class movement that would happen but that's not there it is true that the unions are fragmented they are divided this is true but it is not true that they are not even where the unions are not there the workers are on war path some places where the unions are not there they fought back and got their lockdown wages released Uh, they fought back and they did not allow management to impose a uh, uh, 12 hours uh, work day even in absence of unions there so when the workers decide to fight leaders or no leaders they move ahead i am visualizing i am visualizing that the days are coming when this uh, uh, whole thing is emerging into the movement forms and uh, nobody will be able to stop it it will move ahead Uh, irrespective of governments irrespective of management irrespective of even trade unions but the trade unions presence will give them direction will be able to lead them in appropriate direction not to have anarchy and chaos that's why unionism is important and there has to be some leadership of any movement and that's where the role of trade unions is there so i am proud we are part of trade unions and it is not a small thing you are dealing with almost 100 crore people's lives because their families also count they also have to have benefits of the social security and their people should get proper jobs who are into the labor market from their families so i would like to end here this course will continue and continue in the next webinars also thank you thank, thank you so you. much amarjeet ma'am and there are also global evidences that this is going forward and also taken by yan in in many continents across the world now moving on amitava sir is here waiting patiently amitava sir would you like to yes please uh oh. is go ahead sir give a very brief comment i want to speech at the conclusion my only observation is and i'm also giving it that if trade unions are ignored If the labor laws are implemented as it has been promulgated, and add to this, the 
unemployment situation, landlessness, land loss situation, and the global recession, which is much more prominent in our country, our own economic condition. This condition continues, then trade unions have a very serious responsibility. Because the society will be wrecked with the lawlessness, will be wrecked with the dead people, they, they will be wild, they will be looped to each other, there will be serious social unrest out of the situation. So, trade unions have a serious responsibility. No audio, sir. No audio. No, ठीक नहीं आवाज नहीं आ रही. Yes, yes. So, nevertheless, let me move uh, ahead to Prashant sir. And uh, Prashant sir, so so much of uh, good feedback and response also you have got. Uh, so th there has been many instances also. बोलेंगे. चलो बार बार ये बोलो. बहुत disturbing. फिर भी काट जाएगा. We are getting some disturbances. Yes, and sir, there has been many policy schemes also mudra. पीएम स्वनिधि पीएम आत्मनिर्भर रोजगार योजना एंड देर हैज ऑल्सो बीन सो मेनी ऑफ न्यू इनिशिएटिव ईपीएफओ ईएसआईसी न्यू डायमेंशन ऑल्सो कमिंग गेग वर्कर्स हाउ डू यू सी एज योर कंक्लूडिंग एंड वे फॉरवर्ड रिमार्क फॉर द डेलीबरेशन ऑफ टुडे प्रशांत सर योर वे फॉरवर्ड बॉस लेबर मार्केट विल ओनली ग्रो एंड विल थ्राइव हाउ वी डील विद इट एज अ सब्जेक्ट विल वेरी ऑन who is looking at it at what point of time if i am a journalist i'm slowly looking at labor market from a social sector to an economic sector it's a consumer economy sector trade union may look at it from a different perspective but labor market in a country like india will be there and nobody can ignore it how can you ignore 50% of your people right now so 500 million people uh, or, or let's say uh, 475 to 520 million uh, labor market you cannot ignore that segment but it depends on how you treat that segment whether you want to look at that segment as uh, somebody who are uh, low level guys no minute or just uh, labor class or or you want to look at them as your human resource will build your economy so i think i will leave with this comment because no government no organization no media house no academician can ever ignore 50% of its own people its own human resource which is building its economy how we look at it will decide where we are taking this country and its economy thank you thank you so much sir and it's almost supper time for everyone so let me just finally formally uh, propose a vote of thanks so thank you everyone for joining this evening and being so patient uh, all our uh, panelists and also the participants here also and on facebook live for this very important deliberation today a panel discussion on the future of labor codes impact and way forward from the trade unions perspective under our series the state of employment and livelihood hashtag #employment debate uh, organized by impri indian social institute and counterview and uh, we are so thankful for uh, be everyone to be so lucid and so uh, insightful and forthcoming on their suggestion on this issue and uh, i am sure we will all come back to this issue as we progress ahead this year and uh, uh, i i wish thanks to all of our uh, panelists amarjeet ma'am chand prakash sir uh, virjay sir and uh, amitabha guha sir our discussion prashant kenanda sir and rashmi rashmi venkatesh ma'am and our moderator prasak kr sham sundar for uh, taking this together and uh, 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 dr denzil sir for guiding us and uh, supervising this so well for academy missions it's become quite tough to uh, you know handle all, all these things so, but thank you all of you from all of us uh, for putting this together and we wish you all to take care and <clears throat> hope to catch you on future episodes of our hashtag employment debate thank you and please take care of yourself thank, thank, thank you and thank good you. health thanks to everybody to our, thanks to our thank you thank you thanks to all and namaskar very engaging sub ratri namaskar गुड नाइट नमस्कार नमस्कार थैंक यू थैंक यू बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू